Coming up, why you should use an unlicensed radio service for your amateur radio activities. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. If this is your first time here and you're interested in entertaining and informative amateur radio stories, then please press that subscribe button and make sure you click the little bell to be notified when future videos are released. Well, today we're going to talk about the Multi-Use Radio Service, or MURS. MERS is an unlicensed radio service that allows for personal and business communications on five VHF radio channels. You may ask, well, what does MERS have to do with amateur radio? I thought this was an amateur radio channel. Well, the answer is quite a lot, actually. And if you're involved with amateur radio emergency communications, you're going to want to add MERS channels to your arsenal of communication methods. We'll talk more about that in a bit. But first, let's dig into what MERS is. Well, according to the FCC, the multi-use radio service uses channels on VHF 151 to 154 megahertz spectrum range. The most common use of MERS channels is for short distance two-way communications using small portable handheld radios that function similar to walkie-talkies. MERS has authorized five channels that were previously in the industrial and business radio services known as the itinerant channels or color dot channels. This radio service is very similar to GMRS and FRS radio services, but there's some important distinctions that we'll talk about in a bit. MERS uses five channels or frequencies. Three of them are in the 151 megahertz range and have a narrow bandwidth of 11.25 kilohertz. And the other two are in the 154 megahertz range and use a wider bandwidth of 20 kilohertz. So when you program the radios, make sure you use the correct bandwidth as the wrong choice will affect your audio quality and possibly cause interference to adjacent channels. MERS radios, they're limited to two watts total transmitter output power and this might not sound a lot in most cases but two watts is more than enough for short-range communications but the good news is though even though you're limited to two watts you can increase your range with an external antenna in normal circumstances expect less than a couple miles of range using the handheld radio with the with the rubber duck antenna but using an external or base antenna your little two watt radio could increase its range up to eight or ten miles Repeater use is not allowed on the MERS channels. Now I mentioned that MERS is an unlicensed radio service and it's for personal and business communications. None of the channels can be reserved for the exclusive use of any one user. But, um, some of the pre but there are some previously licensed commercial users that have been grandfathered onto the MERS channels. So don't be surprised if you hear regular business communications on certain channels. If this happens, just find an alternate channel or use a tone code to filter out their transmissions. Transmitters or radios need to be certified to be used on the multi-use radio service. So your little Baofeng radio here, even though you can program this to use the MERS channels or frequencies, it, is not, um, it cannot legally operate on them. So I don't advocate their, their use on the MERS channels. Instead, you'll want a type accepted radio, maybe like um, in an expensive VHF commercial radio. These can be ty are type accepted that can be used on the MERS frequencies or a radio that has been specifically manufactured and type accepted for MERS like the BTEC MERS-V1 handheld radio. Uh, this inexpensive handheld radio is type accepted for MERS channels. It's easy to use and it also has a removable antenna. So you could connect an external antenna to this radio to increase its range. What's the difference between MERS and uh, GMRS and FRS bands? Well, the big difference is that MERS is a VHF service and GMRS and FRS are both uh, UHF. VHF frequencies have a little bit different advantage when it comes to propagation, especially if you're using them outdoors or maybe in a wooded environment. GMRS and FRS really are intended for personal communications and MERS can be used for both personal and business settings. Also, GMRS requires a license, and MERS is license-free. FRS on also is a license-free radio service, but it really has a limited power range of 500 milliwatts and also a non-removable antenna. 
So since FRS and GMRS are quite, po are, are quite popular radios, you can find the, the cheap blister pack radios pre-programmed with the GMRS frequencies. Now you'll find that they're, they're used a lot more than the relatively quiet MERS frequencies. And this brings me to my point why MERS is a good addition to your amateur radio emergency communications arsenal. Having a few MERS radios that you can pass off to unlicensed individuals brings them into the emergency communications team. Let me give you an example. So our emergency communications group works with a local motorcycle dealership to provide communication support for their annual fundraiser and rally. Our team uses amateur radio frequencies to coordinate a parade of over 500 bikes. Plus, um, we use it for health and welfare communications uh, during um, the event activities. We also have a half a dozen MERS radios that we uh, pass out to event organizers for their communications needs and for, them, and for them to communicate with our team. Since they are in license, the MERS radios fit perfectly for their needs. And as an emergency communications team, we can provide the instruction and the discipline so that they can use the radios effectively. As an income group, being able to provide trained communicators and equipment is a big win for supporting these events. So if you're looking for a way to bring added value to, ser to your served agencies and uh, community groups, consider investing in a handful of MERS capable radios so you can better integrate into their communication needs. Well, there you have it, the multi-use radio service. Have you used MERS for emergency communications or for other needs? I'd love to hear about your experiences. Please leave a comment below. Also, uh, more articles and information can be found on my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. It helps a lot. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. The link is right down below me. And other videos that may interest you will pop up right alongside. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. I'm Michael. KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.